something like this. Tag team, back again. Check it to wreck it, let's begin. Party on, party people, let me hear some noise. DC's in the house, jump, jump, rejoice. There's a party over here, a party over there. Wave your hands in the air, shake the dairy, yeah. These three words mean you're getting busy. Whoa, there it is, Hitman. Out. I'm about to show all you folks what it's all about. Now it's time for it to get on the mic and make this mother party hot. I'm taking it back to the old school, cause I'm an old fool who's so cool. If you wanna get down, I'ma show you the way. Ooh, yeah, it is. Let me hear you say. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. See Cole, tag team back again for announcements today. Today is Friday, May 28th, half day today. Today's a cycle day five. Before we get going with our announcements, it's going to be a busy one today. Let's rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. It's the last Friday. Also. It is the last Friday. I was, Mrs. Williams just told me to say that. Uh, I yes. totally forgot it. Yep. We planned this stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> Very All good. right. Ready? Here we go. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God. God indivisible with liberty and justice for all all right now for today's weather report we'll kick it over to mr payne thanks mr k mr williams that was fantastic ac cole it's friday and the weekend it's a long weekend you get an extra day you've made it and here's your weather this morning you're waking up the temperature is in the low 60s and you'll see that sun throughout the morning but as the day wears on, those low-lying stratus clouds are going to start moving in. The high today is only going to get to 70 degrees. And then that rain should probably start around 3, 4 o'clock. And it's going to continue all night and then into tomorrow. And this weekend, even though it's Memorial Day weekend and we think hot weather, we think pool, we think ocean, well, not so much this weekend. 55 degrees is going to be the high on Saturday. Stratus clouds hanging around all day. Sunday's very iffy, could be showers throughout the day, but either way, temperatures only getting into the mid 60s. Now, your best day for the weekend is Monday, and yes, you have off for Memorial Day. The high's gonna get around 75 degrees, partly cloudy. You definitely will see the sun. All right, C. Cole, I hope you have a great weekend. Now, we have a, our special guest is back, our very own veteran from the Air Force, Mr. Fair, sixth grade teacher. Thanks Thank for coming you. on again, Mr. Fair. You're back. You're welcome. You're back. And now yesterday, boys and girls, teachers, we learned about Mr. Fair. He served in the Air Force. The F-111 is what he flew. He served in Saudi Arabia during the Gulf War. Uh, we learned that the temperatures in Saudi Arabia are extremely hot in the shade, 97, 98 sure. degrees. And at night, it gets very cold. We know that the deserts get very cold because it doesn't absorb all the heat during the day. That that sand just it just reflects it so once that sun goes down it gets very cold all right now mr fair saudi arabia that's not the only place you've served where, where else have you been right i've been deployed uh mainly in and out of europe we deployed to turkey several times to spain uh italy we did a lot of flying of course around germany and england as well and what, what are what's the weather like in some of those places well England is pretty much as advertised. It's dreary, it's wet, a uh, very moist climate, a lot of rain. I think uh, Mr. Angle will even back me up on this. When I heard that Engl I was told that England has two seasons, July and winter. So that pretty much sums up the weather in England. But it's a challenge also flying above the clouds, below the clouds, using your instruments to get work in um, uh, on that as well. Germany, same sort of, same sort of weather. They said about... Uh, Germany has a little bit more sunshine, but they say something like, if you can see the mountains, it's going to rain. But if you can't see the mountains, it's already raining. So pretty much the same type of climate there in Germany as well. Now, Turkey is wonderful. We deployed to Turkey several times just because the weather was very good for flying. All right. I did not know that. All right. Now, Mr. Fair, you've been in the air. You, you flew 13 years? Yes. All right. Now, you have to have some probably pretty wild stories. Can you, can you tell us one? 
Uh, okay, we were just talking about this earlier, and these are not common events, but I do remember two times when my plane was actually hit by lightning. One time, shortly after takeoff in England, again, trying to punch through the clouds, climbing out after we took off, and just so happened one of those thunder bumpers lit up our cockpit. It was like a big spark coming out of the cockpit, and then everything was dark. We still had we still had hydraulics though, which mean we had the stick in the rudder so we could still fly. But I remember looking out on the wing and seeing the light still flashing on the wing, so uh, that was a pretty good sign. I thought we'd get our systems back, and we did eventually get most of them back. But again, uh, we had to put the plane on the ground really quickly. A lot of our navigation systems did not return, but again, we just took off, so we were close to the base and we could put it down. Now another, another one I'll tell you but very briefly, same sort of situation in Spain where we had four jets flying together and we tried to fit all four through a hole in the clouds maybe made for one or two of them. Well again, I, I didn't see anything, I didn't see the, the, the thunderstorm or anything, but we heard a loud bang on the aircraft and again everything went dark for just a split second. It came back up but we had lost one of our generators which is really not a big deal because we have four generators, a lot of redundant systems, but still we had to head back to the base. Well, since there was four of us, one of them, one of the other jets volunteered to come back with us, make sure we landed safely, which was good. Well, lo and behold, it seemed like his jet started falling apart as well. I don't know if he was struck, struck by lightning or something as well, but he lost a hydraulic system. And just to, to simplify things here, we had four two hydraulic pumps with two backups. So he lost one. So we thought, okay, it's good. We're all headed back together. We'll look out for each other. Well, then he lost a second hydraulic pump. So now all of a sudden, he had a bigger emergency than we did. And as he was rolling out on final, lining up with the runway, he lost the third pump. Because there's such a strain on those other pumps when you start losing the hydraulics that everything runs off of, of one or two pumps. Now he's down to one pump. Fortunately, he was... He was uh, able to land the aircraft. We saw him land, touch down. I thought we were going to see a uh, first time up close and personal an eject, ejection from a jet, but fortunately they landed safely. But as they were rolling out of the end of the runway, you saw the back of the airplane, the slabs, we call them the elevators, just sort of droop, which means that that last pump had given out. He, he had nothing. So we got him back to the base uh, in one piece, which which was good, but uh, that, that'll that get your attention in a hurry. And for sure, you need a lot of skill to go in and land something like that when you, you got those types of problems. And that's why we keep training and practice. <laughs> exactly. And the weather played a role. Well, Mr. Fair, thank you so much, not only for coming on today, but for your service to our country. Boys and girls, we have Mr. Fair on. It's Memorial Day weekend. It kicks off the patriotic season of summer. Enjoy your weekend. Mr. K, Ms. Williams, back to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Payne and Mr. Fair. Thank you more, Mr. Fair, after that weather report for this weekend, Mr. Payne, but again, not your fault. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Fair, again, for your service and for making it out of that lightning strike. Holy moly. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, that is. All right, so uh, we're gonna jump ahead and just since uh, Mr. Fair was just talking about his time in the service. I'm going to read a few things. Monday is Memorial Day and Memorial Day is celebrated to honor and remember all the men and women who died fighting for our country. And these men and women dedicated their lives so we can be a free nation. Some people do get Memorial Day and Veterans Day confused. Veterans Day is a day to honor all the men and women who have served in the U.S. Armed Forces and Memorial Day is a day to honor those who lost their lives. So um, originally Memorial Day had been celebrated on the, um, it was always on the same day. I don't have that date right here, but um, and it is now celebrated on the last Monday of May. The original name was Decoration Day and it was called Decoration Day because family members of fallen soldiers decorated their graves with flowers. Uh, on May 11th, 1950, Decoration Day was changed to Memorial Day and President Richard Nixon declared Memorial Day a federal holiday in 1971. And the official flower of Memorial Day are red poppies and they hand those out. If we ever have parades again, um, you would often see those little red flowers handed out. A um, Couple more things for this weekend. Today is hamburger day. So 
maybe if you would have been here today, we would have cooked out hamburgers instead of hot dogs. Mm -hmm. But you're at home, so make your own hamburgers. Uh, tomorrow, May 29th, I know this is a big holiday for you. You celebrate this every year. Yeah. yeah. Put a pillow in your fridge day. Oh, how could I forget? Yeah, good thing I gotta I reminded you. I got to get one you. ready. You cool do. pillow. Yep. That's how you get them cool. <laughs> that is. <laughs> you get it really cold. If you put really, it really in cold. In the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> and Sunday is Macaroon Day. Oh, so if any of you are fans of macaroon, there you go. That's your day to eat them. Yeah. So, right. well, yeah, and definitely. Lot yeah, we got a lot to get to. Uh, for Memorial Day, I want to give a shout out to both my grandparents. Neither of them are alive. My grandfather, Raymond Clawater, served as a heavy machine gunner in World War II, and uh, he earned a Purple Heart for uh, being wounded. Uh, he actually stormed uh, the beaches of Normandy, and oh, wow. he was actually injured in uh, the Battle of Crucifix Hill. So I have a strong uh, allegiance and, you know, reverence for people who serve in the military. And my grandfather on my mom's side, Dominic Visco, um, he actually served on the home front and helped to uh, build and weld ships and stuff for uh, the, the Navy during World War II. Hmm. So, uh, you that know, I want to give a quick shout out. In Saving Private Ryan, where there's still Yeah, the uh, it's, it's crazy. And that, that might be a little bit more. But, uh, you know, as Memorial Day rolls around, you know, I have a strong uh, history of military service in my family. So I want to give them a shout out on here, too. So, um, all right. So moving on from that. Um, <laughs> segue into questions. Segue into... <laughs> Mrs. Williams, ask Mrs. Williams, and ask Mr. K. So, so we got a number of questions coming forth. Mrs. Williams, I think you got the first one today, so let's get it rolling. All right, and again, all thanks to Mr. K for doing the research on these questions. Uh, this one comes from Leanna Barlett, who is in my homeroom. What was the first toy ever made? Um, among the earliest known toys are small stone and clay balls or marbles. I believe Mrs. McGowan talked about marbles okay. yesterday, how to make them. Uh, marbles were, were found in a child's grave in Nagata, Egypt, and the date was from 4000 BC. Uh, medieval toys were made of wood and included yo-yos, cup and ball toys, and spinny tops. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. All you right. Take the next one. Yeah. All right. I got, so I got the next one. So our <laughs> next question comes from Miss Delaney Carrigan, sixth grader from Mrs. Rupert's class. Thanks for your question, Delaney. And she asks, what will we do on the last day of school? Well, boys and girls, as we said during our last announcement, you're probably just going to watch Mrs. Williams and I reenact all of Greece during your morning announcements. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't think that's probably planned. We'll probably have <laughs> lots of fun things planned. You might be doing some stuff within your, uh, your own classroom or maybe team that your teachers have planned. But uh, most certainly the most important thing on our last day of school is to just celebrate finishing another school year and uh, getting ready for summer and what awaits us for next year. So good question, Delaney. Speaking of Greece, I've made my kids watch it with me last Friday night. How did it go? Uh, they told me I was not allowed to recite any lines <laughs> or sing any of the songs. They're did, no fun. Did that stick? Or... Nope. Mm -mm. I'm nope. so glad. I'm so glad that you didn't listen Recited to Recited just about all of them. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. You want to go? I think here? you got the next question. Oh, I do. Okay. So this one comes from Sanaya Ch Chopra in Mrs. Armstrong's class. A good question. What exactly makes stickers sticky? Uh, stickers use a substance called an adhesive, a kind of glue or paste that makes them stick to a surface. In adhesives, the molecular ropes, very high tech, mm -hmm. are arranged so that their little sticky parts are all lined up. With all those sticky parts working together, the molecules stick very tightly to one another and to many surfaces. Science in action. <laughs> so, that was a cool question. That I was. Saw, read that and I was like, oh, I never thought about that. I just thought they just stuck. So, yeah. there you go. You learn something every day. All right, next question comes from Ivan Flores Rivera, fifth grader in Mr. Dong's class. So, what was the first movie that came out? The first movie was known as The Horse in Motion, and that came out in 1878, and we're not going to think of that more of like a movie that we might see today, but this groundbreaking motion photography was accomplished using multiple cameras and assembling the individual pictures into a single moving picture. It's something that you could do today using a few cameras that are set up to go off at the exact same moment. The movie was made to scientifically answer a popularly debated question during this era. Are all four of a horse's hooves ever off the ground at the same time while the horse is galloping? The video proved that they indeed were, and more importantly, motion photography was born. However, the first actual continuous motion picture is known as the Round Hay Garden Scene, which came out in 1888. This was the world's earliest surviving motion picture film showing actual consecutive action 
is called, uh, actually called The Round Hay Garden Scene. It's a short film directed by French inventor Louis Le Prince. While it's just 2.11 seconds long, it is technically a movie. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, it is the oldest surviving film in existence. Hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't that. know that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, keep it uh, moving on. Uh, do the color one? Yeah. Do you, do you have one more? Go. I think that was the next one I had, so oh. let's go with that. I think, okay, this one's a good one. Uh, Phoenix Quintero from my class asks us what our favorite colors are. I like brown and green. I like earth colors. I don't know. Very, very natural, I guess. How about you, Mrs. Williams? On the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, my favorite color is orange, oh. and so is Jaden, who is in Mrs. Joseph's Mrs. class. Mrs. Joseph's class. Very Jaden Foreman. He wears snazzy little orange Converse sneakers. We have, we have bonded over those. The orange chucks. Mm -hmm. Classic, yep. classic. So thanks for that question, Phoenix. All right, keep it moving on. We got so many that we had a, a couple more. Uh, the next question, all right, I did a lot of research on this one. I was doing math calculations. Like, if you walked by my room, you would have been like, what are you doing, Mr. K? Uh, this question comes from Miss Lily Malutzi, a fourth grader in Mrs. Barman's classroom, and she asked us the question, are aliens real? So, my response, probably hard to say. However, I did some calculations on, uh, some, some scientific, some astrology, some astronomy, some things like that. So, the proper distance, the distances we measure as a specific time between Earth and the end of our observable universe is 46 billion light years, making the diameter of our observable universe about 93 billion light years, meaning our universe from one end to another is 93 billion light years. So when we think of light years, it's, not, it's more used as a this distance of measurement, okay? So a light year is actually uh, a measurement. So a one light year in Earth measurement is six trillion miles. That is such a huge number, it is not even funny. So to measure this, I searched up what the longest route is from the East Coast to the West Coast of our country. The longest route takes 3,527 miles to get from one end of the country to the other. To get to the end of our universe, we would have to travel the equivalent of making, okay, one, one billion, <laughs> seven hundred and one million, one hundred sixty-two thousand, four hundred sixty-one trips from the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, given that in perspective, there are a hundred billion planets in our galaxy and we are one of two trillion galaxies within our universe. So, while we might not have actual hard evidence, it might suggest that there may be other life out there, just given how big our galaxy and our universe is. So That, that was, was really, a lot to get to that answer. It was. That was a real <laughs> lot. And believe me, you should have seen me trying to crunch numbers. Math <laughs> is not my forte either. So, I'm probably off somewhere, but I gave it a shot. So, All right. Good question, Lily. And our final question for today comes from Bella Black in sixth grade from Mrs. Freeze's class. How cold is the top of Mount Everest compared to the bottom of it? That's a good question. That is. The Everest summit temperature ranges from an average of minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit. And temperatures range throughout the year from around 22 degrees in the height of summer to as low as negative 5 degrees in the winter during the day, with the temperatures at night ranging from negative 15 in the winter to around four degrees in the summer months. So I think it's pretty safe to say it is cold whenever you go to Mount Everest. Definitely. Four degrees sounds about uh, my pillow after <laughs> National Put Your yes, Pillow in the Fridge Day. I'm at about four degrees, so mm -hmm. like the, the base of Mount Everest. So it makes for <laughs> that would be perfect good. sleeping. Yes. All right, and since it's the last Friday of the month and the last Friday of the year, here are our May student of the month recipients and you will be getting something um, this is sponsored by carvel all right here we go final one of the year guys in the current solo team in fourth grade anna minchuga mrs lillis's class arline garcia mrs mcdevitt's class abby alberts the tyson Jessets team alex panero perez the barbin and sharp team matthew mora the painter and cauldron team johan bonilla and in Ms. Anagnas class, Fabiola Echeverria Torres. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Good job, everybody. In fifth grade, from Ms. class, Eliana Ari Ariano, 
Miss Sager's class, Maynor Guerra Sesena. In the Snyder and Don class, Anthony Almonte. In the Anton Romiak team, Leah Buchanan. Armstrong Gatone team, Kenley Brill. The Kemmerer Hawes team, Isaac Stout. And in Miss Wenzel's class, Kaylee Rivas. Moving into sixth grade. Uh, in the Williams and Fair team, Jason Ron. In Mr. Mann and Mr. Myron's team, Sujeli Escarja. Escarja. Uh, Bag and Sosa Rupert team, Moses Guerrero Sierra. Mr. Rankin's class, Zachary Stout. Mrs. Wallace's class, Merlina Reyes Alvarez. And Miss May's class, Janiah Lynn Santiago. And in the Kapazinski and Freeze team, Bella Black. On to specials. In Phys Ed for Mr. Angove, Evelyn Bennington in Mr. Rankin's class. In Phys Ed for Mrs. Walter, Madison Schiller Regal. Art for Mrs. McGowan, Mackenzie Bricker in Mrs. Romiak's class. Music for Mr. DeWalt, Austin Yoder in Mr. Sola's class. Music in Mr. Reininger, Emanuela Gayapong in Mrs. Williams' class. A band for Mr. Figueroa, Mary Lou Fry in Mrs. Armstrong's class. In Engineering for Miss Nelson, Blake Brady in Mr. Fair's class. In Guidance from 6th grade in Mrs. Siegfried, Francisco Taveras, again in Mrs. Williams' class. In 5th grade for Mrs. Botasic, Jasani Cortez. And rounding it out, 4th grade for Mr. K, uh, Vashti Sneed in Mrs. Kerr's class. Way so congratulations down. to all of the Student of the Month recipients throughout the year and for your May Student of the Month. Absolutely. So, well done, guys. Look for your uh, prize in the mail from Carvel and enjoy it. It's getting right into the time to, yeah, to get that ice Carvel. cream and nice cold treats. Yes. So, remember, no school Monday. It is Memorial Day. Today is a half day. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. All Until right. next week. Until next week. Time. So, I guess that means tag team out. Tag team, tag out. team out. All right. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Enjoy your long time, uh, long break. If you know anybody that serves in the military, make sure to thank them for their service. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next week.